there's two other things, uh, observations from what you just said. One is that um, startups tend to be confusing because there's so much hype all around them because of their scale and because they have to run a business, they need to be able to make plans. They need yeah. to be able to have management plans. They need to understand what a key performance initiative looks like and everything else that you need when you have more than two people working on a project. And so those are all things that are really great and wonderful and uh, scientifically proven to produce good results at scale, but they're yeah. almost orthogonal to what uh, three guys in a garage are trying to accomplish, you know, fueled oh. pizza and diet coke, you know, so it's just an interesting difference. Yeah, no, it's the difference between uh, guiding principles, right? If you're a large corporation, you're guiding principle, regardless of what your mission statement on your website says, your guiding principle is shareholder value, right? That's your, that's your compass's true north. If you're a small startup, your guiding principle is survival, uh, yeah. right? And there was some compelling reason you quit your day job to go start this company um, and sur surviving that and accomplishing that, that's your compass's true north. That's a completely different set of, of mandates that you're working towards. But you mentioned something, Ned, I thought was pretty uh, interesting. You mentioned about the hype and there's a ton of hype with startups out there. So sometimes our second urban myth comes about that startups are all hype. It's all just buzzwords, flash and sizzle. And, and what's your take on that? Well, Mark, there is a lot of hype around startups and it's kind of a product of the world that we live in. You know, you have to make outrageous claims and use buzzwords to be recognized and to, or at least you think that you do, to be heard when you've come up with something that's innovative. The way that companies uh, obtain investment is through investors who are also attempting to identify and ride on waves that they hope are cresting. Mm -hmm. And so you end up with a tremendous amount of buzzword itis and you end up with a tremendous amount of followerism. To be heard from a prospective customer, you have to entice them with something that doesn't sound crazy. So people right. tend to gravitate towards whatever it is that they think might be uh, resonant with a prospective customer. And we see that now uh, with cloud or security or uh, DevOps or things like that, which are just uh, at this point, you know, buzzword holding pins for some kind of functionality. Uh -huh. But if you actually did create a new way to toast bread, no one would ever hear you. If you said, well, we're going to come out and toast bread, you've got to say it's the DevOps solution for blockchain and an enterprise or whatever that list of buzzwords is. And again, it's exacerbated by the way that uh, these companies are raise money. The investors also want to feel like they're doing something that other people are doing. And I completely understand yeah. customers who buy it don't want to feel like they're the only person doing it. I think maybe we're even thinking a little bit about the hype cycle in uh, one of my favorite episodes, The Bad Pitch, when we kind yeah. of um, poked a little bit of good humored fun at uh, at some of that hype cycle. And we only did that because it ends up being a problem for our customers, which we regret. We don't want them to have to wade through that stuff and be confused. So we would like uh, things to be a little bit tighter, but let's live in the world. The world we live in, there's hype around almost everything, whether it's a new shoe uh, that'll let you jump a thousand feet in the air or a new piece of technology, which will allow you to DevOps your blockchain in a secure world that's uh, in the cloud.